Warning, this podcast contains themes of extreme violence and murder. Subject matter may be offensive to some listeners. Discretion advised. Welcome to another episode of Evil Transgression, your homicide headquarters here in podcasting. I'm Josh, and with me as always, Dustin and Rex. Hey, how's it going? Hey, what's up? You sound awfully strange today, Dustin. (laughs) Well, Dustin's not here. No Dustin today, folks. Failure. He uh, decided that he wanted to work for the man today Mm -hmm. instead of working for the evil mob. Yeah, I'm not too happy about it. So I think that we should all band together and go to Dustin's workplace and break him out. Let's do it. And then we'll be on the news. <laughs> yeah. <And> somebody's <laughs> doing a story on us. There you go. Uh, we have a story today about a gentleman who is probably the worst family member you could ever have. Really? Yeah. Now, we've we've gone through some uh, family side stuff, some family side. Mm-hmm. And uh, this guy is going to take the cake for me. You know, we've we've done the the uh, poisoning of family members. Yeah. Uh, this guy's a twisted dude. Mm, looking forward to hearing it. Um, before we get started, I want to give a shout out to one of our listeners. Now, she wants to remain anonymous, which mm-hmm. is okay with us, but yep. left us an extremely generous tip in oh, the tip yeah. jar. Very on, nice. On, yeah, on our uh, evil transgression page. Uh, TheEvilTransgression.com If you have not been there, please check out our website. Yep. Uh, but yeah, left a uh, an extremely generous tip. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you very much. Absolutely. Um, we'll, uh, we'll get into more of that mm-hmm. at the end of the episode. We also have a listener question today that we will also yep. deal with at the end of the episode. But uh, other than that, everything good? Yeah, everything's good. You didn't get called into work like Dustin, so... No. Me either. Yeah. I always make time for this. Yeah. I'm not a... A, a sissy like Dustin. <laughs> yeah, me neither. Just can't wait for him to hear this episode. Mm-hmm. And he's I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> right. call, he'll call us both and complain. You guys can't put that out there. That's mean. That's so cruel. You're still making fun of me, and I'm not even there. <laughs> <laughs> No, we do miss Dustin. We wish he was here. Yeah, a little bit. So before we get a little uh, too far in depth on this one, I will uh, give you the warning that there is some violence towards children, so you have been warned. But uh, if that's not your thing, let's get this episode and catch back up next week. Yep. So buckle up, evil mob, as we discuss James Urban Rupert. James Urban Rupert was born April 12th, 1934 to Leonard and Charity Rupert in Hamilton, Ohio. Hamilton, Ohio is about 20 miles north of Cincinnati. Oh, okay. James Rupert had a troubled childhood, which included a mother who was a real piece of work. She uh, constantly reminded him that she didn't want him and occasionally told him she would rather have had a daughter than him. Wow. That's real loving. Yeah. His father wasn't any better because he uh, also had an awful temper and showed no affection towards James or his older brother. In 1947, James's father would pass away, leaving the father role up to Leonard Jr., who was James's older brother, which wasn't any better for James. Leonard would constantly pick on James and would treat him so bad that James would eventually run away and try to commit suicide by hanging himself. Mm. James's attempt would be unsuccessful and he would eventually return home. Now that's pretty bad. Yeah. When you get bullied by your older brother enough to where you're going to run away and then try and hang yourself. Yeah, that's sad. But how do you mess up hanging yourself? 
Uh, yeah, it's probably not a, a topic that we should really talk <laughs> yeah, too much right, about. But right. Uh, yeah. Maybe too thin of a rope. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. Um. People often nest with James because of his small stature. Now he's only uh, five foot five and one hundred and thirty five pounds, so he's a small guy. Wow. I mean, some of the 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 video and pictures I've seen of of James, he's mm-hmm. uh, he's a little he's a little fella. Mm. I'm like twice his size. James uh, was also known to be a very helpful and quiet man. So I mean, he's a he's a good guy. Yeah. So far, I mean, from what we know, leading up to this point, which is uh, saying a lot from a kid that's been told by his parents that they didn't want him and mm-hmm. they wish he was a daughter and, and his older brother and his older brother's a douchebag and for him to be a a decent guy is a, that's a pretty good thing oh yeah it is pretty surprising in 1974 James dropped out of college and began training to be a draftsman James is said to have been very jealous of his older brother Leonard because unlike James Leonard had a very successful job as an electrical engineer. Now, that's a that's a a a, a pretty good job. Oh yeah, it is electrical engineer. But I mean, a draftsman if he if he uh, excels in that, that's not a oh, terrible yeah. job. No, not at all. But uh, the biggest kick in the sack here is Leonard would also go on to marry James's ex girlfriend. And have eight children with her. Oh wow! This brother really is a piece Just of screwing work. Screwing him every you know? chance he gets. Yeah, like that's that's movie material. Stuff, oh yeah, right? it is. Like the guy that gets picked on all the time. His brother. Uh-huh. Hooks up with his ex girlfriend and has eight babies. I with mean, her. yeah. Could you just imagine a, a family function and you got to see your ex loving on your older brother who hates <laughs> yeah. you? That's bad. That's a that's a rough way to go there. Hmm. So not only did James lose his girlfriend to his own brother, his mother was getting tired of him because he couldn't keep a job and he spent all of his time drinking and using money he borrowed from his mother and brother to buy stocks until the stock market crashed and James lost everything. So, I mean, it wasn't like the the stock market crash of 1929. Right. He lost, uh, he lost pretty much everything he had in the stocks mm, that sucks. during that time. In February of 1975, James would inquire about a silencer and would begin to stock up on ammunition. So there's your first red flag. Mm-hmm. Yep, things are turning. Yeah. Now in 75, I don't know how um, you would go about buying a silencer for a firearm, but mm. he's he's uh, he's looking for one. Right. Sure, he wasn't like on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> Long, long before the eBay days, you know. <laughs> on March 29th, 1975, James was seen on the Great Miami River shooting tin cans with his 357 Magnum. Later that night, James would go to the 19th Hole Cocktail Lounge, where he went pretty much every night. That's his, that's his, uh, his go-to. Oh, okay. For night drinking. Is that like on a golf course? You would think. Because I've I've seen that before, that name at a golf course. Once there, James would begin talking to Wanda Bishop, an employee of the bar, and he would tell Wanda that his mother was complaining about him, about his drinking and not paying rent, and you know all the complaining his mom's doing. So you know, he's he's telling this lady how crappy his life is. Yeah. And then as he's leaving the bar, he tells Wanda that he needs to solve the problem. Mm, another uh, red there, flag? Yeah. That's your huge red flag yeah, there. Yeah, big like time. Somebody standing there waving it on top of a, a mountain like, hey, look here. Uh-huh. James returned to the bar around 11 p.m. that night and began talking to Wanda again. Wanda would ask James if he solved his problem yet, and James would reply, not yet. Wanda. What are you thinking? Right. Hey, uh, you was sitting in here complaining about your mom. Did you solve your problem yet? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're the worst bartender ever, Wanda. You're supposed to help him through his problems, uh-huh. not get him to commit crimes. <laughs> right. So 
uh, James would stay at the bar and continue drinking until 2.30 in the morning when the bar closed for the night. So he, uh, I could see why mom would complain a little bit about his drinking problem. But oh, yeah. She also was probably the reason he has a drinking he started, problem. started, yep, exactly. Between her and Leonard, uh-huh. uh, that's why James is probably as messed up as he is. Yep. Uh, on Easter Sunday, March 30th, 1975, James' older brother Leonard and his wife Alma and the couple's eight children would come to Charity's house for Easter dinner and an Easter egg hunt for the kids. So Mm. we're going to have a little Easter festivity. Sounds fun. So this is the next day after James was out drinking at the 19th Hole Cocktail Lounge Mm -hmm. until 2.30 in the morning. You know, know, they show up, they probably got their Easter best on and everybody's having a good time. Right. Old uh, James is passed out in his bedroom. Uh huh. Around 4 p.m., the uh, family had just finished their Easter egg hunt with the kids. Uh, old Uncle James is still asleep in his bedroom, but uh, this is where he starts to finally wake up from mm-hmm. the, the hard night before. Mm-hmm. He gets out of bed and loads his 357 Magnum and two 22 caliber handguns. Mm, this is not going to be good. Uh, evidently, um, the bartender talk from Wanda mm-hmm. and his problem solving is finally coming to a head here. Right. James would uh, enter the kitchen where his brother, sister in law, and his mother, Charity, were. Once in the kitchen, James would shoot and kill Leonard first, then shoot and kill Alma, and then turn the gun on his own mother, Charity. Wow. After murdering all three adults in the house, James would now turn his focus to the children. Mm. It's just, um, <laughs> that's brutal. Yeah, it is. Yeah. He just rolled out of bed on Easter, of mm-hmm. all things. Right. And walks into the kitchen to take his brother, sister in law, and mother's life. And I, I could, I could uh, maybe understand them with everything that's been done to him, but the kids. That's just, uh, that's sick. He, uh, like, you know, we just passed Easter here. Right. I rolled out of bed, and the first thing I was thinking was, who's got the deviled eggs? <laughs> like, <laughs> yes. who's bringing the deviled eggs, uh-huh. and who's got the um, the dumplings? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I wasn't thinking, I better load my three fifty seven right, right, yeah. Magnum <laughs> and my twenty two caliber yeah. guns. But, uh, I mean, we're talking about a sick guy here. Mm-hmm. Again, like you said, you know, he he was probably mentally abused and pushed yep. to a point, but there's no excuse for what's about to happen. No. Next, James would shoot and kill 11-year-old David, 9-year-old Teresa, and 13-year-old Carol. Mm. So there's three kids. Yep. After killing one of his nephews and two of his nieces... James would enter the living room where the remainder of his nieces and nephews were at. At this time, James would shoot and kill 12-year-old Anne, 17-year-old Leonard III, 16-year-old Michael, 15-year-old Thomas, and 4-year-old John. Wow. So we're ranging from 4 years old to 17 17, years old. yeah. After killing literally everyone in his family, James would wait three hours until eventually calling the police and confessing to what he had done. Mm. Brutal. Yeah, yeah, it is. Like you said, the the I mean, you can't even really say the three adults because we don't know what his his ex. His, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah uh, now that you brought well, that up, yeah. So. We'll say we can understand to a certain degree right. his anger towards the three yeah. adults. Yep. But to go and kill all of these kids, these yeah, are your nieces and nephews. Right. That's and terrible. From four years old to 17 year old. Mm-hmm. I mean, wow. That's, yeah, that's sick. On Easter. Right. And then, I mean, the older kids. Uh, a little less so than the, the younger, but the younger's this is Easter for them. Mm-hmm. They just did a yeah. uh, an Easter egg hunt. Yeah, probably got their Easter baskets yeah. and 
You know, having a good candy. yeah, having yeah. a good time at, at grandma's house. Right. Here comes Uncle James out with uh, handguns and, and takes out the entire family. Mm. So once the police arrived, they found James waiting for them just inside the front door. He was arrested and charged with 11 counts of murder. James's trial would be held in Hamilton County, and a three-judge panel would find him guilty and sentence him to life in prison with no possibility of parole. Good. Shortly after the sentencing, there would be a mistrial, and James would be granted another trial. Where do you How? get a mistrial? Yeah, I, that doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, he confessed. Right. Right. He, he called mm-hmm. them and said, "Look, hey, I just killed uh, three adults yep. and eight, eight children. kids. Yep. Waited around. Yeah, three hours. I waited three hours. Gave you a phone call and uh-huh. said, hey." I just wasted my entire family. Come pick me up. Again, that's our uh, jacked up judicial system, you know. So he gets a, a, another trial. This time, the trial was moved to Finley, Ohio, which uh, was about 125 miles north of Hamilton, where the original trial was. It is believed this would give him a better chance of the trial because it was moved out of the county where the crimes were committed. I don't understand that one either. Again, uh, why are we, why are we, um, trying to help a criminal out? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Spe- especially one that admitted to what he did. Uh huh. There's, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about no, this. No, no, not at all. At his second trial in July of 1975, James was found guilty again. Surprise. Mm-hmm. And sentenced to 11 consecutive life sentences. 11 consecutive life sentences. Good. So he's going to live and die 11 times. <laughs> yes. Over and over and over. Uh-huh. Like Groundhog Day. Yeah. In 1982, James would yet again be granted another trial. Wow. Because his defense would say he was insane. Oh, give me a break. His defense would even pay out of pocket for the best psychiatrist and, uh, psychologist in the country. Does this dude need a W this bad? Apparently. Wow. I mean, <laughs> but you're going off the, the, the defense that he's insane. Well, no shit. A uh, little bit. I would probably say he's insane. He, he killed uh, 11 people. Yeah, regardless of insane or not. I mean, that's 11 people. Put him in jail. And they were his family. Right. So I'm pretty sure he's insane. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't like, you know, I could see if they were fighting a death penalty because that's what, you know, most of the time people do. They fight the yeah. death penalty. You're just you're just fighting a losing case here. I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, what's he going for? Trying to get a chance at parole or I, I don't know what he's going for here. It, just, it doesn't make sense to me that you're fighting. I mean, to me, you're fighting a losing battle. Oh, yeah, for I sure. Mean, either way. What are they going to do? Say, oh, yeah, he's insane. We're going to keep him in custody for the rest of his life. Either yeah, way. Right. On July 23rd, 1982, another three judge panel found him guilty, surprise, of mm-hmm. the murders of his mother and brother and found him not guilty of the other nine murders by reason of insanity. Uh, How does that happen? That makes no sense at all. Like, you're not crazy for killing your mother and brother. But you are crazy for killing the nine other people. These judges are pissing me off at this point. But it, how, what, what, what's the difference? Yeah. Hey, hey you killed your mother and brother. That's terrible. Mm-hmm. But you can't be held responsible for killing the other nine people because yeah. of insanity. That's BS. James was then sentenced to lo- two life sentences instead of the original 11. And if you're wondering how he was never eligible for the death penalty, that would be because the death penalty was suspended from 1972 to 1976. So he was one year short of facing the death penalty. James was denied parole in 1995 and then again in 2015. So he was up for parole. Never should have happened. I mean, 
how did we go from you know 11 11 life sentence consecutive life sentences yep, no chance no, of parole yep, none two two life sentences but you you two have a parole so parole. far yeah, yeah twice now James is currently housed at the Franklin County Medical Center in Columbus, Ohio. Mm. James is eligible for parole again in 2025. At that time, he will be 90 years old. Wow. So he has another shot at parole. Yeah, it's just sad. At 90. You give him credit. He's 90 years old and he's incarcerated. He's mm-hmm. that's, uh, that's pretty impressive. Oh, yeah. So that, folks, was the story of James Rupert and quite possibly one of the most evil people we have ever covered uh-huh. on the podcast. Oh, yeah. Definitely evil. I mean, it was straight to the point. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, wow. Mm. But once again, take a look at this amazing uh, judicial system. We oh, have. yeah. Yeah. To where Terrible. we can, we can uh, go from 11 consecutive life sentences... To uh, him being up for parole in 2025. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, it's just so backwards. Their sentencing. Yeah, I mean he was con- he was convicted twice. You know he w- well he was sentenced twice to consecutive life sentences. You right. Know, the first two trials were both. You know the the first one he was uh, he was charged with the eleven counts of murder. Yep. And they told him life in prison with no chance of parole. Mm-hmm. They moved the, the trial uh, off of the the mistrial. Yep. He gets it again in Finley, Ohio. He's sentenced again to 11, consi- con- 11 consecutive life sentences. Right. And then he's granted another trial because they said he was insane. I'm well, just- they... But at that trial, they say, yeah, you're crazy for killing nine of those 11 people. Right. But those two, he wasn't crazy. Uh-huh. Yeah. It was, just, it was like a light switch flipping <laughs> his head made him crazy all of a sudden. I mean, granted, the guy's crazy. Oh, yeah. Uh, you have to be some some degree of crazy to oh, do that. Oh, for sure. And like we said, you know, uh, to me, I think it would be opposite. Like... Mm-hmm. The insanity would be on the two, the mom and the and the brother. Yeah, and then the For nine the way they would treated be, them. Yeah, and the nine would be, uh, hey, buddy, you can't claim insanity on that. That's just straight up evil. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Those yeah. But either way, who am I? Mm-hmm. That's why we need to change the way things go. Oh, it, our needs, it completely needs overhauled. And that's why we're going to be in charge of. Uh, Coming up with new ways to definitely. To, uh, I'm to looking handle forward this. to that. <laughs> so vote for us in the next election, folks. <laughs> we're gonna have we're gonna have our uh, electric couch and mm-hmm. all that stuff. Yep. The three at once. Yep. It'll be awesome. It will be. So uh, that is the story of James Rupert. Mm. I'm just man. I'm just shaking my head. I don't even know what to say. I'm just speechless. The way they handled this. It's a, it's an ugly situation. Mm, yeah, it is. And who, who's the guy that like just three hours later is going to call the cops? Like, hey, yeah, three hours ago, I wasted everyone in this house. Uh huh. I'll be sitting on the front porch waiting for you when you when you roll up. Yeah, yeah. So you know, because he was insane murdering all the kids, but he's not insane when he made the phone call. Right. Whatever. Craziness. Yep. Absolute craziness. So we have uh, a couple messages yeah. that we got from uh, the Evil Mob listeners. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first one is from Danielle. Danielle writes, Hey guys, just an FYI, O is Othello. It's another Shakespeare play turned movie. Oh, okay. That uh, is in reference to Dustin saying, uh, yeah, there's another uh, Shakespeare movie. I think it was based on uh, Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> yeah. It was it was uh, Othello, which oh, okay. was a completely different story. <laughs> yeah. Go figure. The uh, the common denominator there is Shakespeare. <laughs> okay. So, so thank you, Danielle, for setting Dustin straight, and uh, we appreciate your mm-hmm. your listening. Yep. 
Our second message and question comes from Megan Walker, who says, Hey guys, I'm wondering about where you record. Do you have a stationary studio you all go to every week? Or can you change up the location? Do you guys hang out as friends outside of recording? Like, do you invite each other to your kids' birthday parties, etc.? You have a good rapport, and I wondered if it's all the time or just for the show. Thanks. Well, Megan, we actually do not like each other a single bit <laughs> outside uh, of the show. It's all for show. No, we, uh, we record every week in the same spot. Um, we are in the process of having our quote-unquote studio built. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, we have a, a, a room set up as a studio right now, um, but we're eventually going to be moving to this sweet little studio mm-hmm. that is being built. Yep. Um, we have changed locations um, from when we originally started. Like Like we've said before, we even did an episode in uh, Dustin's basement with, on his couch yeah, with uh, with Barbie cars yeah. holding, <laughs> holding up the mic. microphones, but yeah, we're we've moved past that. Now we have cool microphone stands and all that stuff. Yeah, and I mean it, it's big equipment. There's really no way to to transport it to yeah. various locations. What we're using now, we're not going to pack up and move. No, so. my uh, PC tower alone is a beast. So. <laughs> Now, uh, as far as us hanging out outside of recording, uh, when we get time, we do. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been rough lately. We're like we're, we're adulting you now. Oh we're yeah, like all adults. I mean, back in the day, it was it was almost every night. Yeah, for uh, sure. Josh and I would hang out. Uh, there is the birthday party though. I believe next month, right? There is. Yep. So I'll be there. Absolutely. And uh, so I mean, yeah. And the with Dustin, Dustin's actually uh, part of my family, so I can't get away from him <laughs> as much as I've tried. Right. Um, but uh, we do go to kids' birthday parties and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Yep. So, but yeah, uh, I mean, we're our, we're all friends, so it's it's not just for the show as much as we like to think it is with Dustin. But <laughs> yeah. that's only because he's not here to defend uh, himself right now, which is perfect. Absolutely. But uh, thank you for the question, Megan. And uh, if anybody else in the evil mob has a question, go to eviltransgression.com, scroll down the page, and you will see where you can submit a question or submit a message to us. So, mm-hmm. yep. and nice will, and easy. Uh, uh, we'll reply to it on, on the next episode. Yep, definitely. Easy to do. Uh, what do you got for me, Rex? I'd say, uh, since you covered that, uh, I'll just say uh, go to our Facebook page. If you haven't done so yet, give us a like. That helps out. Um, leave us a review on, on uh, Apple or whichever platform you listen to. That, that definitely helps out as well uh, in order for us to be uh, on their feature page. Definitely get more, uh, more downloads, more, more people subscribed. So Absolutely. help us out. Uh, If you would like to join our Patreon, you can also do that from any of our link uh, posts, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, at the bottom of the description of the episodes. Or you can go to eviltransgression.com, our baby. Yep. You can uh, sign up through there. We also have the tip jar there that we discussed at the beginning of the show when we got a sweet donation. Definitely sweet. So you can... uh, you know, if you don't want to sign up for the, the monthly Patreon, throw us a bone through the tip jar. Mm-hmm. Um, all of the donations we get go right back into the podcast, whether it's upgrading, you know, some of our equipment or yeah, the web page. And yeah, it, nothing's free. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, this stuff here definitely is not free. So we do uh, we do put it back into the podcast. It's not like, you know, you're donating to. Dustin going and getting a steak. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, you know, designing the shirts, which you can buy our shirts on our um, thread list page. You can get to that from eviltransgression.com. Do mm-hmm. you see the common theme here? Yes, the theme, I do. Go to eviltransgression.com. Perfect. Um, sign up through our Patreon. Um, we're going to start doing a little special episode for our uh, Patreons. Mm-hmm. And uh, the way we're looking at 
doing that is going to be probably a behind the scenes kind of thing that we do. Yeah. Um, kind of like hanging out with the guys, hanging out with yeah. the crew. Just hearing all the crazy stuff we talk about when the when it's normally not recording. Right. Right. We're going to hit record so you can hear what we do before we record. <laughs> yeah. Kind of like a uh, Beyond Evil uh-huh. little episode. So we're going to start doing that for our Patreon listeners. So if you're interested in that, sign up today. And uh, that would be awesome. Oh, yeah. Sure. So you got anything else? Nope. I think that's it. Dustin? No. No, I, I'm good. I think you guys did a great <laughs> job. And uh, as well, it was, it was so, real sweet. So super. You guys are real good together. <laughs> High five. Well, oh, thank you, Dustin. Thank you, Dustin. So until next week. See ya. See ya. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>